in the final stretch uh, of the day's events. Um, uh, Central Coast Sustainability Association is genuinely honoured that so many people were prepared to come and share their stories, showcase their products, and come and learn and find out what fantastic things are being done on the coast, you know, setting us up for a, a great future. Our next speaker is very much in that category. They're a manufacturing business, so which is dear to my heart. I love manufacturing. I think it's a fantastic wealth builder for our community and a fantastic source of employment for our creative kids. Um, so Greg has a fantastic story. Um, so I will actually let him tell you a story because no one will tell it better. R Ripper, thank you. It's, we're in the f it's three o'clock. It's nearly beer o'clock. And um, while others are coming in and welcome, um, just hands together for uh, Bruce and Fry for putting this on. It's fantastic. <laughs> Come on, you can do better than that. Thank you. All right. So, um, look at that. Um, I, I, um, my name is Greg Gates, and um, I'm the managing director of Siren Holdings Group. Siren Holdings Group is a uh, privately owned company out of Kays Beach, which, is, as I understand, is on the very outer limits of the Central Coast. And. Um, <laughs> But I only live up the road, so the Central Coast is like a, a you know, home for me. And um, we pretty much operate in the hospitality segment. We've got four trading businesses. We've got a dishwasher business uh, called Norris Industries. We've got a chemical business called Zexa. We've got a, a, a um, kitchen equipment business that anything you'd see in a commercial kitchen, that's like a retailer. And then we have a finance company that, that funds that. So there's four groups... Uh, four uh, companies in our group. Um, our founder had a view that um, he liked to look after the vulnerable. And a large portion of our profit goes towards 10 identified charities that go anywhere from the Cancer Council to the, through to uh, muscular dystrophy or um, uh, the, the guide dogs. And there's a bunch in between. And, you know, for 30 years we've been supporting those charities. So if we have a good year, so do they. And um, the, the, sec the, the, uh, the other thing is, um, and I'll, I'll go from the, the bottom to the top, um, we've got a sustainability bent to it, and I've probably never considered that we're greenies in any shape or form, other than we've all got kids and grandkids and we want to leave the place just a bit better than we found it, and that is the, the, the wish of our founder. And uh, we've been able to use sustainability ideas to actually make our dishwasher factory profitable because it's a pretty tough category to make in Australia. And so we, we've used sustainability ide ideas over, you know, more than a decade to drive down that cost of operations and I'll talk about that in a minute. And one of our other values is we make it here and we pretty, out of those dishwashers that we make, we pretty much make every part that we, we can. We could get it cheaper from China, we could get it cheaper from somewhere, we control our supply chain, we control our specifications and where we can we make it here. So. Um, as an aside, and I've just got to tell you this, Norris, a dishwasher a business, started in Sydney, is in 54, and um, Vince Norris sat at the bar reading a newspaper, and, and he was having a beer, and he, he, um, he read in the paper that the New South Wales government changed the law that you weren't allowed to refill a beer glass unless you first sanitise it. And he turned to his mate, I don't know if he did, but he, he turned to his mate and said, I reckon we can build a machine like that. And we've been building them ever since, right? And um, it, we're really pleased. And we, we've, got some, we've got a world first in, in what we've uh, done. And uh, I'll talk about that a bit later. So that's a bit about us. Um, we've won a bunch of sustainability awards. Some of them I can... Um, some of the ideas I can lay claim to, but most of them I can't. They're, they're the thinking of other people within our organisation. We've got about 100 kilowatts on the roof. And um, our power bill fluctuates between $20 and $200 a month. I'll say that again, right? <laughs> and so um, it's not just because of the solar, it's because of how we use our power. And I'll tell you about our one, uh, an employee we had that called Ernie, and he'd been coming to work for like 15 years, and he'd come to work at 5 o'clock in the morning and turn all the lights on and get everything going, but we didn't start till 7. And so for 15 years, we had two hours of excess power running through the building that we didn't need to do. And we put a system on our, on our building that allowed us to manipulate what we're going to, you know, what we use and how we use it, when we use it. And it gave us new eyes. And 
um, we said, oh, Ernie, settle down, mate. Turn, turn it on 10 to 7 and be fine, right? But what we've been able to do is match our um, consumption with our workflow and match our generation with our heavy consumption. In other words, if um, we know that the, um, there's going to be a good hot day, we won't leave some of our, we'll leave some of our big machines till later in the day when we're really generating some solar and we'll get to run them for free. And so we, we, um, we've kind of got some of those ideas that are just dug into our culture. I, I talk about this, um, this bubble wrap repurposing thing here and every time I talk about it, I just love it we've got this machine that takes old cardboard you put it through the machine it turns it into a mat so instead of us using or throwing that cardboard out or recycling that cardboard in some other person's facility we turn it into a bubble wrap equivalent wrap our dishwasher motors in it and then it goes out the door so anything that kind of comes in we try and whip it around turn it into something else um, we, um, we collect a lot of rainwater and most of our uh, chemicals are made on rainwater. Um, we test our dishwashers on recycled water, recycle metals, and it's, it's just simple. We go, you know, all the stainless steel goes there and, and it's not a difficult process, it's just part of our culture. Um, some of the projects, um, I talked about the, um, the, the cost of running our factory from a power perspective. Because we operate in the commercial kitchen uh, segment, we want to take that thinking and drive low power consumption into a commercial kitchen. And one of the rising costs for them, and you know, probably pre-COVID, and, and it would be the same now, but w was the cost of, of power. And we thought that if we could put some of our ideas into a commercial kitchen, it might help them be more sustainable. And so we've got a project, it's on hold at the moment with the CSIRO because of the COVID thing. And um, the project is to reduce the power. And uh, uh, the, the three goals of the project are um, peak demand management, so you can't turn everything on all at once. And you just imagine someone running into a cafe first thing in the morning, they've had a big night, and uh, they're running late and they're, they're, the, the kitchen's got to get going, they're turning everything on at once and it's spiking the power and, of course, the person paying the bill has to pay a big one because you're not allowed to spike. Well, you can, but it'll cost you. So peak demand management. The second thing is uh, predictive control. So because we make dishwashers, often a dishwasher sits there on, heating the water and not used. And so it might go, yeah, I know between two and four, you're not used, so we're just going to wind the power back a bit and then save you a little bit, bit of money. And the third one is predictive maintenance. So we'll be able to tell if a motor's about to blow or an element about to blow. Now, what I know about a dishwasher complaint, they're always angry. It always breaks on a weekend. In the middle of service, when they've got a 1,000 people in there and everyone's upset, if we could predict that, our customer service levels will improve. We can't do low cost of goods as an organisation, but we can make them smart, right? So... Um, Um, I'll talk about the energy waste study. So we made a, uh, well, the waste, wasted energy, sorry, um, study with Newcastle University. We made a, a dishwasher um, a couple of years ago and it all really come for me from a filling out a tender document when someone said to me, how much power does your dishwasher use? And I'm looking at it going, I don't get the question. Like, depends. How hot is the water coming into it? And, like, there's a whole lot of variables. And I started to think about the supply chain of water that goes into a commercial dishwasher and they're always connected to a hot water service and I thought your hot water service sits over there at 60 degrees and by the time the water travels I bet you it loses heat and of course we got the uni to test that it did and it nearly loses half its heat it goes into a dishwasher and it's got to go from say 40 degrees to 80 and that whole thing is just a waste of time so I said to R&D guys I want to I want a dishwasher you could plug into a house, a house plug, not the big three phase. I want it to go on cold water and I want it to do one minute cycles all day. And they looked at me like I'm an idiot and in truth sometimes I am, but <laughs> I knew what I wanted and those guys delivered it and we take wasted heat and if you want to see how it works I'll explain it to you later. We've taken wasted heat, preheated the water and we've got this machine that uses 50% less power than our previous model. Now, that materially could mean for a small cafe somewhere between three and five, six, seven thousand dollars a year in power. That's a lot. 
So um, Newcastle Uni really helped us with that and we understood it. And we've got a coronavirus study going on at the moment um, with a pivot that we've done that I'll talk about in a minute. So um, I want to honour this guy. Oh, getting a bit emotional. This guy died. Um, he's our founder. He's a ripper bloke, hard bloke, probably the hardest bloke I've ever worked with, but a visionary. And it's funny because the guy's blind. <laughs> and um, he, he died in, um, in April, and it was our biggest trading day in the history of the company. We, we, um, we buried him that day. And um, he had a real passion for the values that we talked about. And um, he would, um, he loved that we won the awards for, you know, environmental awards in the way that we, man that we approached our manufacturing. Um, you know, product design, marketing excellence, uh, technology, we're a sustainability partner in environment heritage. He, he valued that. We've won the Australian Design Award three times, all from a little dishwasher factory <laughs> at the outskirts of the Central Coast, right? So, he probably didn't even know what he was looking at there because he was blind. But, <laughs> but I, you know, I handed that to him and, and said we won an Australian Design Award last year and he was proud of it. Um, that's the machine I was talking about. And see these pipes here? They're, it's like a heat transfer. I've got 10 minutes. I oh, know. <laughs> we'll keep going. Right, so um, the end of February, that ship come into Sydney full of coronavirus. It's Sunday night, I'm tossing and turning. And 90% uh, of our revenue is attached to hospitality. And we're all seeing what's going on there. And so I couldn't sleep. I knew our business was about to stop. And we had a small chemical business that made cleaning products, mostly for dishwashers. And so Monday morning, I got our team into the boardroom. And I said, by, um, by the end of this week, we'll be making hand sanitizer. And they're looking at me like I'm an idiot. And I said, um, we had this discussion on packaging and whatever. And all we had was five litre containers that we put dishwashing detergent. We had quite an argument about whether that was an appropriate size for hand sanitizer. And I said, I believe there will come a time over the next few months that people will be looking for a bucket load of it and they'll be coming up going, could you fill this bucket? And so by Wednesday, we, um, we, we sorted out a formula, got raw material, got packaging, got labels. We started taking orders on Wednesday for a product that we didn't have yet. Um, our team worked uh, day and night and uh, we did factory trials on the following Monday and Tuesday we started production and um, for an extended period of time we sold 5,000 bottles a day of that product. Right? And um, I kind of went, see, told you. It was <laughs> but, but in reality it was absolutely amazing and um, we don't pretend we knew anything about what we were doing. I've got an excellent chemist and alongside, we, we jumped into the uni and said, have you got a coronavirus? Can you test our formulas on a coronavirus? And I'm pleased to say that our, um, our formulations will kill a coronavirus. We're still working with the TGA on how we make that claim. And, um, and our formulations are alcohol and no alcohol and the no alcohol ones are the ones doing all the work. Who hates putting alcohol in their hands right now? Everybody, right. So, um, I'll s so, our factory operations went from very, very predictable supply chain, where everything was efficient. We wanted to, you know, we would count the steps. If we could reduce the steps of the amount of people walking in the way that we made our dishwashers, there was less labour involved. That's where our head was. And w when that happened, our whole business went into chaos. And anyone that works with me go... Greg brings a bit of chaos with him and he needs some people to make some order. And so we talk about chaos and order lots and that's how we roll. And if you're too orderly, you just need a bit of chaos to sort it out. So, and um, I got a distinction over the last few months about the, the word resilience. And we went from a very strong efficiency focus to make profit to go, if we're going to get through this, we're going to have to be resilient. And I would say we probably run the least efficient we ever have. But what I've also learned is that you throw people into chaos, they organise quickly. And very quickly we started getting better production every day and, you know, people come up with ideas and we saw the team jump into place. 
I stole that off the internet, but it very, very well describes what, what happened with us. And um, so over that time, I, I've got my t some of my team here, we've developed 80 new chemical products and we've put them into a very big supply chain. So they said, could you make this? And we, didn't, we said yes. Could you make that? We said yes. And we just kept saying yes. And uh, we rapidly developed 80, 80 new products to the point where we've gone from the five litre container, which is all we had, and even to some degree, these pack formats are all we could source. And uh, we've, we've started a significant um, uh, business and it's more than COVID response. So um, this is a, some feedback from Associate Professor Nathan Bartlett. Formulations provided by Zexa, that's our chemical business, have been tested for the eradication of multiple human coronaviruses. Infectious virus was undetected in, in 30 seconds. We're doing a 10 second test at the moment and um, it, it, it passes. So um, I might add, if I, I had a board meeting the other day and I showed them a chart of how the chemical sales replaced the lost sales in, the, in our hospitality business and it was really good. So what we're left with, definitely got a new culture. And um, if we didn't make that move, we probably would have thrown a big blanket over the business and said, come back after the Rona. Um, we've got large new customers outside of the hospitality space. We've got great new um, um, chemical products and we've got interest from all over the world on, on some of the things we're doing. Um, we've got an improved balance sheet, <laughs> which is really important. And this year we doubled our ch charitable donations, which was a... A, uh, a fantastic thing to do and I've actually got some happy directors. Um, what we're left with, aware, just keep aware of key trends and I say for us right now, touch point protection is a key trend. You think about the things, I just touch my face, I just touch this, I, I don't know who touched that, you know, every, everybody's touching things, right? And um, if you want to keep safe, just be aware of that. Where, po where possible, um, be ahead of the curve. John, our founder, was always ahead of the curve. Um, our focus is try and do more with less. And um, my bottom line is, is I used to think just efficiency and financial su uh, sustainability work together. I've seen another picture that I go, you know what? Resilience is your friend, right? And uh, it, there's some pain in resilience, but I, I'm really pleased we've come through that. We've got a whole new business. It's really exciting. We're a bit tired. And uh, that's our story.